Hello and welcome back to this YouTube channel and I want to take a moment now to talk directly to those people who have not yet made the decision to subscribe. You're watching this channel without doing me as content creator the basic courtesy of subscribing. Now, is that problematic behaviour on your part? Yes. Do I judge you for it? Again, yes. If you don't want to subscribe, well, OK, but why take the chance on people pointing at you behind your back, whispering about you, withholding job opportunities and life chances simply because you didn't subscribe? So take the Pascal wager on this channel. It costs you nothing. Just hit that button and it's one less thing to worry about. This week I've been at the always alluring London Film Festival, a mouth-watering compendium of pretty much everything that's happening in or out of the awards season fold. And I've absolutely loved The Bike Riders by Jeff Nichols, a movie about motorbike gangs. That was the golden age of bike riders. And I never felt so out of place in all my life. That's when I saw him for the first time. It took my breath away. I'm Benny. Five weeks later, I married him. I thought I could change him, you know? Not to be different, but to be, I don't know, like he's wild. Hey! I told you to take that jacket off. You'd have to kill me to get this jacket off. What about the bar? Burn it down. The club got real big real fast. They started running drugs, gambling, prostitution. Is that what this club is now? Quit writing. Don't ask that. This is about a love triangle and a succession crisis, inspired by the immersive 1968 photojournalist study of Chicago bikers by Danny Lyon, whose black and white pictures are flashed up over the closing credits. This film opens up the storytelling throttle with a throaty growl, delivering the doomy romance of an old fashioned western and the thrills of a mob drama. The Bike Riders is set in a world in which the increasingly careworn gang leader competes for the attention of his toughest follower with this man's girlfriend, while at the same time grooming him as his heir. Yet this is a group where the biker king, whatever his plans for a dauphin, can be challenged for the crown by any subordinate at any time, according to the rules of his own violence democracy, the incumbent gruffly asking fists or knives. Tom Hardy is Johnny, truck driver, family man and founding head honcho of the 60s Chicago motorbike club, The Vandals, inspired to form his gang after the ecstatic epiphany of watching Marlon Brando in The Wild Ones on TV. This film's whole approach in laying out Johnny's life circumstances is to imagine an answer to Brando's famous reply to being asked what he's rebelling against. What have you got? His leather-clad guys and black-top battlers have monikers like something from West Side Story, bleary draft reject Zipko, beefy cockroach, loyal Lieutenant Brucey, Californian recruit Funny Sonny, and dependable foot soldiers Corky and Wahoo. But the toughest, sexiest, and most smoulderingly badass of the whole lot is Benny, played by Austin Butler, the only one of the vandals who directly takes on the law and whose violent altercation with civilian locals results in a gruesome injury which Johnny will have to avenge, leading to his gang's mutation into a quasi-crime mob, attracting star-struck wannabe joiners from all over the country. But Benny is deeply in love with Kathy, played by Jodie Comer, with an outrageous northwestern accent with which you could slice a chrome tailpipe in two. She is effectively the narrator, speaking directly to Danny Lyon himself, played by Mike Faust. Like Lorraine Bracco's Karen in Scorsese's Goodfellas, Kathy is a respectable working class woman who never intended to get drawn into this world, but found Benny very attractive, just as he was beguiled by her cool, sceptical confidence. It is Cathy who can see the ritual absurdity of the Vandals' codes of masculinity and how, having all their lives affected to despise rules, they set up a club with a huge amount of rules, followed with pedantic solemnity, like a cross between the army and the Rotary Club. She can see how her Benny is going to die one day in the service of this crazy group, and so a duel for possession begins between her and Johnny. Unlike the heroes of Dennis Hopper's Easy Rider, a film which is to provide employment for one of the group. The bike riders have no end or quest in view. They just drift around, assemble for picnics in green spaces that they churn into mud by races, and get into fights with other gangs with whom they later cordially have beers. 
A lot of their time is spent almost catatonically hanging out at a bar in which there is a big discussion about the costs involved of installing a payphone, which their membership subs would entitle them to use on club business. The Bike Riders is, in its way, like Catherine Bigelow's The Loveless from 1981, in depicting the grain of their empty world while stopping short of showing us their places of employment. What we're watching is a weekend existence, like that of army reservists. We don't get to see Johnny's work as a truck driver, although on his way out of the house to a rumble, he tells his wife he'll pick up some eggs on the way home. As for Benny's life, it appears to be Kathy paying the bills, and Kathy putting the roof over his head, although there is no question of Benny feeling emasculated, other than when, of course, she has to look after him following an injury. The biker's way of life is not precisely ironised or satirised, and the film incidentally doesn't question its heterosexuality. Biker gay images, which were to become an underground US pop culture staple, do not feature. Johnny and Benny's relationship is more father and son. The performances here aren't subtle exactly, with Comer's fierce twang, Butler's soft purr, and Hardy's sibilant Brando-esque drawl. But there's such enormous potency and impact in everything they do on screen. And so the curtain is lowered on another vlog. Please give it a like and a share on your socials. Please remember what I said and subscribe and leave a passionately supportive comment about my work. And please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. And there's something else too. My new collection of short fiction, The Body in the Mobile Library and Other Stories, has been officially announced and it is coming out in April 2024. I hope you'll like these. See you next time.